land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists, led by pilgrim of the 21st century Sapari Skak, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. The scientific expedition continues its work in Indonesia. A group led by Sapari Skak discovered an ancient fortress with traces of our ancestors. Scientists visited Tuban, the place where the ship of the Mongolian army stopped and also found the ship's anchor. Members of the expedition Trails of Nomads arrived by train from Jakarta to Trawulan. The journey took four hours. Trawulan from 1293 to 1520 was the capital of the Majapahit Empire, which existed in the present territory of Indonesia. This gate, trimmed with red brick, has survived from those distant times and witnessed everything that happened here. Despite the fact that eight centuries have passed, the historical monument is in excellent condition. This is the main gate through which people entered the capital of the Majapahit Empire. Our ancestors, who once came here as part of the army of Kublai Khan, entered the city through this gate. <laughs> The territory occupied by the city is not investigated exactly. Excavations are currently underway at the site. Now it is a kind of archaeological complex. But the most interesting thing is that the main gate to the city has been preserved. They are made of red brick. We went through this gate. Once, our ancestors also passed through it. Then we went up and saw that the city was protected by a fortress and a moat. In some places, the thickness of the fortification wall reached 9 meters, but we still managed to overcome it. The expedition team visited the archaeological museum in Trombolan. Its area is 57,625 square meters. The museum keeps all artifacts found during the excavations carried out near Travulan. Most of them belong to the period of the kingdoms of Kahuri Pan, Kediri, and Singasari. There are also items related to the Yuan Empire. In 1927, during excavations, we found pottery dating back to the period of the Yuan Empire. For example, jugs, bottles, pretty trays and bowls. They were all made from high-quality clay. They were also fired and painted. Some of them shone like porcelain. Scientists say that these findings were made in the area of the palace, as well as at the site of a clash between representatives of the Majapahit and Yuan Empire. After getting acquainted with the historical gate in Trovolan and valuable museum exhibits, the group led by Sapari Skak headed to the city of Surabaya. Surabaya is one of the largest cities in Indonesia in the east of Java. It is an industrial and business center with a population of 3.5 million, of which 90% are Muslim. This monument is a symbol of Surabaya. The name Surabaya in translation into English means Suro, a crocodile, and Baya, a shark. According to the legends about the origin of the city name, in the 12th century, King of Kidiri predicted that a bloody battle would take place in this area between a great white shark and a huge crocodile. Historians say that this prophecy symbolizes the invasion of the Mongol army on the island of Java. In 1293, an army of conquerors, accounting for 20-30 thousand soldiers, left China and arrived on the island of Java. 
They were directed by the Emperor of the Yuan Empire, Kublai Khan. The location was perfect in terms of geographic location, especially for trade, because the island was located at the intersection of the routes of merchant ships. This implies China's trade with Africa, China and Europe. Therefore, it was beneficial to conquer the countries located on the Great Silk Road. After Surabaya, the scientific expedition headed to the city of Tuban, located on the north coast of Java and 100 kilometers from Surabaya. Eight centuries ago, the army of Kublai Khan began its conquest against Java with the capture of Tuban. Now this coastline is littered with peaceful fishing boats. In 1293, over a thousand ships with soldiers of Kublai's army stood here. We are in a place called Tuban. In ancient times, this place was a trading port. Once a huge army landed here, there were a lot of ships. Now we see only boats here. This is a commemorative plaque at the entrance to Tuban. The expedition guide named Reduan reads the text written on the board. It reads information about several historical dates. One of them is the military campaign of the Mongol Tatar army to Tuban in 1293. It says Mongol Tatar. Tatars are our ancestors. At that time, historians called all the natives of Dashti Kipchak, all the Turkic tribes, Tatars. European historians named the land of Dashti Kipchak Tataria on all maps. This, of course, does not correspond to historical reality, since the Tatars were actually a small tribe. All the Turkic tribes, including the Kipchak tribes, inhabited a huge territory from Altai to the Danube which was called Dashti Kipchak. These are our ancestors. Yuan Shi Chronicler kept a complete record of the history of the Yuan Empire. Manuscripts say that the army of Kublai Khan, who arrived on the island of Java, began its conquests from the city of Tuban. The chronicles also give the exact names of the commanders who led this military campaign. Mongolian commander Shi Bi and the Chinese commander Gao Xing headed the troops that arrived on the island of Java. Each of them had their own tasks. Some were in charge of the fleet and some of the land forces. The general command was entrusted to a Turkic commander, a native of the Uyghur tribe, a commander named Ikmish. He had the rank of naval admiral. The prehistory of the military campaign of the Mongol army to the island of Java is as follows. The great Khagan of the Yuan Empire, Kublai, first sent his ambassadors to the island. In 1282, by order of Kublai Khan, ambassadors arrived on a visit to the kingdoms on the islands of Java and Sumatra. There were Muslim states on the island of Sumatra as the inhabitants at that time converted to Islam. Most of the representatives of the delegation from the Yuan Empire were also Muslims. They were very well received in Sumatra. Muslim kings also agreed to pay taxes. In 1283-1284, they sent their ambassadors to Kanbalik. The kings of Java did the opposite. They did not accept the ambassadors of Kublai, they captured them, branded them and sent them back in disgrace. After that, the emperor became angry with the rulers of the southeastern kingdoms and thirsted for revenge. But the Kagan could not then immediately equip a military campaign to Java, since he waged a war of conquest against Vietnam. There were several unsuccessful trips to Champa and Dai Viet. There was also a confrontation with Japan. All this greatly weakened Kublai's army. However, despite this, in 1292, the emperor gathered a 20,000-strong army and sent it to the island of Java. 
On the way, of course, there were many difficulties. The road from China took about four months. During this time, they had to endure a lot of trials. Due to storms, some ships sank. Yet most of the troops made it to Java. On the way, the Mongol warriors managed to easily conquer a number of other islands. Arriving on the island of Java, they headed for the city of Tuban. Uh, About a thousand ships with a large army have nailed to the north coast of Java. They split into two halves. One unit, consisting of foot and horse detachments, remained in the city of Tuban. The rest went by boat to Surabaya. According to tactics, the disembarking foot army was to follow by land along the coast. So it was planned to intimidate the local population. That is, people should have seen the approaching danger. The second part of the army at that time was waiting for the rest in Surabaya. When the warriors of the Yuan Empire arrived in Java, there were internecine wars in the local kingdoms. In this confrontation, one of the most influential local rulers, King Kertanagar, died. He was from the city of Surabaya. The kingdom of Java was then called Majapahit. Now it is Trabulan. It was then the capital of the Majapahit kingdom. This means that two troops arrived and there was a confrontation. However, there was not much resistance. The Mongol army immediately surrounded the capital of the kingdom, and the locals were unable to fight back. Son-in-law of the deceased King Kirtanagar Raden Vijaya took advantage of the victory of the Yuan Empire troops. He signed an agreement with the Mongols. He promised his all kinds of assistance, including in providing food in paying taxes. And all this in exchange for support from the enemy. The Mongols agreed. They just needed such a person one who would unquestionably obey and carry out these instructions. Therefore, they happily accepted the proposed deal. But Vijaya, who initially recognized the rule of the Yuan Empire and promised to pay all taxes, later, having achieved his goals, reneged on these promises. He was preparing a plan against the conquerors and he ambushed them on the way to Singasari. The Mongol detachment which was sent to capture Vijaya was ambushed in the middle of the way in a mountain gorge. Many were taken prisoner. Among the prisoners were both Mongols and Chinese. However, most of all were our ancestors, representatives of the Turkic tribes. These are the Jalair, Kirei, Naiman, Kipchak and Argens. Radan Vijaya urgently created a partisan detachment and fought against the Mongol army. The hot climate, constant raids and attacks of partisans weakened the army of Kublai Khan. Thus, witnessing the unfavorable picture of the partisan war, the commanders of Kublai Khan realized that they would not be able to last so long, and they were waiting for help from China. But it took a long time to wait, for about a year. Local residents fought desperately. They burned pastures, spoiled food and drinking water. As a result, Kublai's army could not stand it, and on May the 31st, it was decided to return to their homeland. 
Tura Grezni. Thus, Prince Vijaya, son-in-law of the last king of the Singasari kingdom, Kartanigara, having won in the struggle against the conquerors in 1293 on November the 12th, under the name Kartarajasa Jayavadhana, ascended the throne of the Majapahit Empire. Kiyin kaytuğa mecbur oldu. Bırak ol çalıp op kaytı. Karol'dan... Our ancestors were forced to return to their homeland, but they did not return empty-handed. The queen and more than a hundred relatives of the king were brought by them. They also took a lot of gold and silver. However, of course, nothing could justify the defeat of the troops. After all, the most important goal of Kublai was the subordination of the entire island to the Yuan Empire and the imposition of taxes on its population. Sapar Iskak is always in search of traces of his ancestors. He's heading to one of Tuban's museums. Its employees welcomed the guests with a great joy. 800 years have passed and the descendants of the Kazakh expedition in search of the heritage of their ancestors again arrived on the island. The museum staff welcomed us very warmly. There was a special photo stand, a banner. They were surprised. They met with the Kazakh delegation for the first time. We told them that in the Middle Ages, in the 13th century, our ancestors were here. Their ships landed on the shore. We told that we are now in search of traces of our ancestors. We wanted to know how everything was. Gift exchange. It's very touching and speaks of respect, generosity and citizenship. The head of the scientific expedition, Sapar Iskak, responded to the museum staff with courtesy. He presented his colleagues with brochures with information about Kazakhstan and national headdresses with Kazakh patterns, Takia. Sampar Iskak's long journey is justified. This museum has a lot of artifacts related to the Mongol army. The soldiers brought with them to the island several tons of food, 40,000 silver coins. And these coins are proof of that. Broken and whole earthenware jugs, sabers and daggers. All this belonged to the soldiers of Kublai Khan. The most valuable exhibited in the museum is the anchor. It was on one of the many ships of the Mongolian army which included our ancestors. Sapar Iskak examined the anchor and its chain for a very long time. This artifact is a material source that testifies to those distant events. This is the evidence that you can see and touch with your hands. The museum has several exhibits dating back to the 13th century. One of them is this anchor. It was found on the coast of the island a hundred years ago. Dishes, weapons and coins were also found under the water. Most of them belonged to the warriors of the Yuan Empire. Unfortunately, in the past, archaeological excavations could be carried out by anyone. These are the very valuable materials and facts about the ancestors that the participants of the scientific expedition managed to find on the island of Java. Our ancestors left traces almost everywhere. Java Island is one of the farthest points. Of course, descendants should know about this. Therefore, our young scientists need to seriously investigate these pages of national history. After all, we only find facts that lie on the surface. And the most important thing is in the depth, in the roots, and this requires careful study. It is necessary to raise the archives, to meet with local historians. We must look for information in the Chinese archives. 
and only then one will be able to get to the bottom of the whole essence, to the truth. Kazakhs imagined their ancestors as brave warriors riding horses on a vast steppe. Their silhouettes at sunset are about to disappear on the horizon. Watch the next episode to learn about their legacy in Myanmar.